Hi folks, this is a video video tutorial for chapter 6, a gear mechanism, which is a very simple problem. So uh, basically it's two externally engaged gear and a rack gear down here. And I'm not going to model any of the teeth and uh, just uh, show you the process of putting uh, the stuff together. Uh, ignoring all dimensions, let me start with the product file. And right away, I'm going to save it. File save management. Save as in that uh, particular folder. Okay. Uh, let's insert the backboard. So insert insert new part in there, and I'm going to call it the the wall the backboard wall and wall. Okay, let's make it on that vertical plane. I will sketch a rectangle with two holes in it, two circles in it. So one of them, the uh, for one of them is going to be where the uh, the shaft of the big gear is going to go, and the other one where the shaft of the small gear or the pinion is going to go. So let's make it right, you know, something like that. Exit, pad it, that's good. Let's insert our next part, so insert new part. How about the big gear, let's make the big gear first. Properties, big G, okay, and the big G. Big G, okay, let's make it. Uh, double click on it to get in the part design on that on that plane. I will sketch We're going to project that circle. This is going to be the shaft of that uh, big gear so uh, pad it in the opposite direction Make it one so you can see the coming at the other end and on that face I will sketch a circle So I want this control with that to be concentric. Very good. Exit, add it, one inch. So that's going to be the uh, the big gear. Uh, on that face, I will make a little indentation so that as it rotates, you can actually see things are moving. So exit and pocket that, just so that you can see that something is moving. All right, uh, why don't I change the color of that too? So uh, this whole thing, I'm gonna make it yellow. Okay, so now we're gonna go and insert the small gear. Insert, new part, call it small gear. Right click, properties, small G. And small g. All right, let's go make it. On a convenient plane, on that same plane, I'm going to sketch, project that circle, exit, uh, pad it in the other direction one inch so that sticks out of the other end why don't I change the color on that how about uh, yellow or red and on that face I will sketch so red is not a good idea because sometimes when things don't update they turn red so uh, the first thing I want to do is make sure that uh, these two actually are concentric this and that or uh, concentric. Okay, and I want these two to be tangent. Control, just so that it looks better. That's all. Because in principle, these have uh, gear teeth and stuff like that. Okay. Exit. Pad it by one inch. Okay. 
And uh, just like on the other one, I'm going to make a little indentation there. Uh, put a feature such as a pocket there so that I can see that it's actually rotating. So, uh, pocket to the end. Okay, good. All right, the final thing is the rack. So, insert new part in there. Let's change the name of this thing to rack. Rack and rack. Okay, let's make it. Double click on it. We import design on that plane. I will sketch. Basically, it's just a rectangle, a long rectangle. Well, there we are. We're going to clean it up in a minute. So, let's see. I want uh, this control, that edge in the back of this one control this edge to be coincident with each other okay and I want this line control that curve circle to be tangent with each other very good exit and pad it by one inch there we are why don't we change the color on that too, so let's make it green. Alright, now, uh, there are no assembly constraints here yet, so what I would like to do is to create assembly constraints, because we're going to use the magic wand later on. Uh, let's go to assembly design. Drag these out in the X direction. So this, and that, and that. Why don't we anchor the, the base? So coincident in this axis and that axis, and coin in this plane and the back plane of the yellow gear, the gear. Let's repeat it with the other one. So coincidence between the axis of this and the axis of the, the gear and coincidence between the face of the wall and this back face of that guy and update all right and let's put the rack in there so coincidence between uh, the face of the wall and the face of the rack and coincidence between the edge the, the edge of that wall and the edge of this rack and uh, update okay now uh, we're going to go to uh, uh, digital mockup emu kinematics get the magic wand out right there new mechanism auto create and okay and there should be three uh, th three joints two revolutes and one prismatic Right there. Okay. Now this problem, although it's a gearing system, it can be done completely without the use of the two joints, gear joint or rack joint. See that? These two? Gear joint, rack joint. You can use a roll curve joint where this circle rolls on the circle of the yellow gear and another roll circle between the circle of the roll, roll, uh, yellow gear which rolls on that edge of the rack. So the problem can be done without use using a gear system, but I would like to do that differently here. So I'm going to click on the gear joint. It's asking for two revolute joints. Okay, great, we have them. And then it says, are they moving in the same direction or opposite? Obviously, these are externally engaged gears, so they move in opposite direction. And the rear gear ratio, well, there is a default value, so minus one. No, I don't, it's actually the, the number of teeth on the yellow one over the number of teeth of the red one, or the radius of the yellow one, or the radius of the yet red one. So uh, this can be defined here. Just click on it, select the, the circle of the, the yellow circle, and then the, the red circle. Automatically, it calculates the gear ratio and puts it over there. And we say, OK. Notice that there are two uh, 
angles that can be used for commands here, but we'll come back to that later. All right, now notice that what happened, both rubber joint got gobbled up by the gear joint that we created. Now we want to do the rack joint. Here's the rack joint, you click on it. It's asking for a prismatic joint, no problem, we have it here. And then it's asking for a rubber joint that is the one which was for the yellow one, which was, was gobbled up with the gear. So we can define it. We can create that rubber joint, actually. So let's go in the back. Okay. So we want the axis of this yellow one. Hide it. The axis of the hole. And the plane of the yellow one. Let me bring this in the front. The plane of the yellow one. Uh, well, I can always uh, I can always uh, uh, hide the base and select the, the the face that I want, or uh, I don't. I can use, for example, this this plane and that plane, but mention that there's an offset between them. That does the same thing. The faces don't have to mate, but if you're not then you just specify with an offset. This is going to become a revolution. The other thing that we have to do is uh, define the, the ratio, gear ratio. Now, this is a rack joint. So what it, that gear ratio is, every turn of the yellow gear, how much advances the green one, the green rack. So since uh, uh, well, we can define that, you click on it, you select the circle, and it actually works it out. So it says every turn of the yellow gear, will advance the rack by 311 millimeter. And then we say, okay. Now, needless to say that the degree of freedom is one, right there. And we can double click on the gear. There are two joints here, there are two commands. This one is for the, the yellow one. And this one is for the uh, red one, okay? So uh, let's say that the pinion is what's driving this thing, so I select that this, this guy and make the joint between 0 and 360. And we can make a cartoon. No, no physics here because of such a simple problem that it's meaningless. Uh, so mechanism. Uh, okay, drag it. Insert, rewind, and then we can play it continuously. So, uh, there we are. Okay, that uh, wraps up the, the exercise or the chapter.